Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today I'm going to show you what a fracture of bone looks like under the microscope when it's starting to repair. So this is uh, from a compression fracture of one of the vertebra in the spine. And what you can see here is uh, uh, these long bits of bone. Uh, this bone's been decalcified, that's why it looks pink. Um, otherwise, it would look kind of purple on H&E. You can see these uh, parallel lines, those are called lamellar bone lines. And we see that in mature bone, both the bone cortex on the outside of the bone and the trabecula, the spongy bone in between. So that's a kind of normal native pre-existing bone. The little spaces are osteocytes. Um, and what's happening right here underneath it is uh, fracture repair or fracture callus. Um, in this case, in the spine, it's not making a full grown callus, but this is the same process that would happen if you broke, say, your, your femur or your humerus or one of your long bones in your arms or legs. So what's happening is this stuff is woven bone. And if I flip the condenser, let's see if it shows. It's best right here. The texture is different. You can see that the little lines of collagen, their little tiny wisps of collagen are all going in every direction. They're woven together as opposed to this uh, lamellar bone up here, which is the the mature bone. So that's what the bone lines that are all lamellar and layered and concentric. Those That's the normal native pre-existing bone prior to the fracture. And this stuff that's kind of stuck on to the outside of it is new woven bone. And then the cells that are making that woven bone are these guys. These are osteoblasts or girls. They could be either one. I don't know. But in any case, these are osteoblasts. And let me see if I can flip the condenser that way. They look kind of plasmacytoid, kind of have eccentric nucleus. The nucleus is off to one side. Side, and they have purple cytoplasm, even with a little bit of what looks like a pale area, like a perinuclear Hoff, like you see in plasma cells. So osteoblasts can actually kind of mimic plasma cells microscopically. But we know they're osteoblasts here because they're lining up around this new bone. And what's this in the background? It's hemosiderin. Hemosiderin is what happens when you have hemorrhage. When there's bleeding, the blood cells break down and the heme molecule from the hemosiderin um, inside it gets broken down and the iron from that gets glommed together here and turns into this, this orangey brown refractile substance we call hemosiderin. If I flip the condenser, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, usually on, on my light microscope, you can see it's kind of refractile and three-dimensional. So right away, that tells me there's been bleeding in the uh, marrow space. Most of these cells in the background are actually bone marrow cells, but there may also be a little bit of inflammatory uh, 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 inflammation, inflammatory cells mixed in there. Sometimes it's hard to tell bone marrow elements from uh, actual inflammation uh, when a fracture happens. And then here we've got reactive fibroblasts and myofibroblasts. So all of this process is basically the bone, the person probably has a little osteoporosis, then they got a compression fracture of the spine, and then the, the bone is trying to repair itself. And when they went in to do a, a kyphoplasty where they kind of inject some, some cement or glue type substance in there to, to stabilize the bone, and help reduce the pain for the patient. Um, they oftentimes will take out a little core of that bone so we can check and make sure that there really is just fracture change and that there's not, say, metastatic carcinoma, a tumor, something else going on. So a lot of times when they already have put that needle in to do the kyphoplasty procedure, they'll oftentimes take out a little core of bone for us to check um, under the microscope. But I thought this was a really nice example showing both the normal native bone that pre-existed prior to the fracture and then the new woven bone that's being laid down. And if this would have been left there, like in a fracture, uh, actually as the fracture ages and repairs, this new woven bone eventually will get remodeled and will eventually look like this lamellar bone over time. So if you get, you know, if you break your arm or your leg, you're going to see a ton of this kind of reactive new woven bone being produced uh, to kind of seal the two sides of the bone back together. And eventually that gets remodeled and turned into new native bone, or not, it's not native anymore, but new, uh, it turned into lamellar bone, just like the rest of the bone. Uh, but that process takes some, uh, some time. So whenever we see this woven bone, that always tells me something is happening. This is not normal in, uh, in the, the bone, basically. Woven bone means some repair or some change, or sometimes some tumors make kind of woven bone, but woven bone means something is happening in the bone, a reactive reparative process or a tumor or something else. Uh, this is not normal bone. It's bone that's undergoing a new bone production, and that usually means something's happened. So uh, whenever I see this on a biopsy, it's usually a meaningful uh, finding. Well, uh, nothing uh, dramatic or earth-shattering, but I thought it was a really nice case and I wanted to share it with all of you. Uh, I hope you have a great day.